okay hello um sorry this is a this is a second take um i'm lance nelson i'm the co-founder of the outcast creative that's right and um we're an eclectic group of actors and creatives um a couple of writers a couple of directors and we we like to keep our creative exercise is our muscles our creative muscles we like to exercise them as much as we can um and if we're not getting paid work um then we like to keep doing it anyway because acting as one muscle is a muscle you've got to exercise you've got to keep it going so throughout the pandemic we did a lot of um table reads of scripts and uh, I wrote a lot of new scripts in 2020, more than I've ever done in a single 12 month period in my life. Um, and I wrote more scripts in 2020 than I had written in the last, I think, seven years combined. So um, we're quite a prolific group of individuals who just enjoy doing and reading good work. And uh, this Friday, we will be doing a live table read. It's not really a rehearsed performance, but it's we have done a little bit of rehearsal, but it's a live table read of an older script of mine, one that I can barely remember directing from 2001, called The Marchioness Inquiry. Uh, the Marchioness Inquiry was set up to um, give the uh, friends and relatives of the deceased of the disaster what they had been demanding for 11 years, which was a full, fair, public investigation into the collision on the River Thames on the 20th of August 1989 between the Bow Bell uh, dredging vessel, which was owned by South Coast Shipping, which was in turn owned by Ready Mix Concrete, uh, and the Marchioness Pleasure Boat, which had 131 people on board, of which 51 lost their lives. It was owned by Tidal Cruises. There were a number of complicit factors both before the disaster and afterwards um, which not only allowed the disaster to happen but which also resulted in the friends and relatives being extremely poorly treated uh, by both the press and the government at the time um, and various authorities that were supposed to protect them and um, not make the grieving process easier but certainly help to uh, facilitate that they the things that they needed to do that they needed uh, in order to move forwards uh, the public inquiry was a big big stepping stone in that for them um, it happened 11 years later uh, as i said in 2001 and um, it was a the subject of a play that i produced and edited and directed i can't say that i wrote it because uh, the, the text is um uh, I edited it from the public inquiry. There are some bits of mine that, that are in there that probably aren't in the transcripts, um, because when I compared my personal notes and the transcripts, they weren't always the same. But I wrote copious notes. And for the first time, that's being published on um, Amazon. So the proof copies of it have just arrived, um, along with two other orders from Amazon, which I think are probably not Marshness related. I believe this is probably the package of the proof copies. And I thought it might be quite nice to open these live. And um, before I do that, I'm uh, just going to say um, a big thank you to all the outcasts that have been working on this with me. We, were supposed to, we weren't supposed to do anything in the month of August. It was supposed to be sort of a month of rest because we've been doing quite a bit. And um, I knew that the, the that I was going to publish my plays because that seemed like a logical thing to do so that they're not forever lost in the uh, eons of time. And uh, I felt like I wanted to do this one first. Uh, I, I'd forgotten a lot of the things, so reading it again has been um, quite interesting, um, harrowing occasionally, but I felt it was important. Um, I appreciate that it's the 30 seconds anniversary of the disaster this Friday. And I'm sure there are those um, directly associated with those events who have no wish to uh, regurgitate them. And, and I completely um, understand and sympathise with that. And please feel free not to watch it um, or purchase the book. Um, but the parallels between 
um, Grenfell and Marchioness and other tragedies that have occurred since are still uh, more common uh, than you would think. And um, it's clear that we're not really learning lessons. I don't think as a race, we're very good at learning lessons of our history. I think events in Afghanistan prove that quite firmly. Um, this has been an extremely sad week, um, not just for um, Afghanistan, but, but for the human race, it's probably one of um, our most shameful tragedies. Um, you know, <laughs> almost feels like what we're doing is very insignificant, but I do think it's important to learn lessons from the past. And I do hope that this narrative, it's my sincere hope that it'll be a, a useful and positive contribution to learning those lessons, whether they be lessons of Marchioness or greater le lessons of corporation and corporate responsibility um, in matters such as these. So here we are. I'm going to. I ordered. Uh, I could order five proof copies, and I ordered five because I wanted to be able to give some to those actors I was in touch with. Uh, or had got in touch with recently who were in the original production back in 2001 and I'm in touch with them, about four or five of them. Um, so here it is. As you can see, it's got a, a, a sort of a um, not for resale thing across. Um, uh, this cover is loosely based on the cover that we had for the original production. That's the center arch of Southwark Bridge, which is where the collision took place. Um, and um, it's it's very similar. Um, there's a slightly faded photo, but that's a photo of the original 2001 production cast on the back, uh, which I found recently. And um, uh, there's quite a lot of stuff about the production uh, and the disaster itself in the book. So it's not just um, the manuscript of the play, um, which I have to say looks rather lovely. Uh, it's come out very well. I'm quite sort of quite happy with uh, the spacing and um, size of the font chosen. Perhaps I could have gone a little bigger actually with the font, but um, it's certainly not too small. We can all agree it's all right. Um, but there's a there's a section. At the beginning, of a sort of background to the to the events of the twentieth of uh, August, nineteen eighty nine. Um, then we have um, the background to how the two thousand and one stage dramatisation of the public inquiry came about. Uh, there is then a chronology of events leading up from the twentieth of um, August to um, the two thousand and one public inquiry. And uh, there's a breakdown of the cast roles and also all the credits, cast credits from the original 2001 production. You're, you're all in here if you were in it. I'm not sure everybody's alive now that was in it, but um, sincerely hope they all are. Uh, and uh, we also have um, all the 2001 production team and the thank yous for the people who helped out, so including uh, the likes of the Marchioness contact group and so on. And then we have a list of all the outcasts who took, took part uh, in, the, um, in the 2021 table read, which is occurring on Friday. So um, those people are listed in here. Um, just going to say something else about this. Um, there's, you'll see that there's a dedication on the on the front. Uh, it's quite tiny. I probably could have gone a bit bigger with that. Um, I think actually that, yeah, I think we will go a bit bigger with that. So I think we'll correct that in the um, uh, when I get back to it. But um, uh, um, if you'll see the dedication is to the fifty one people who passed away um, tragically and their families and so forth. Uh, but if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it's also dedicated to actor Michael Williams. Um, I'd like to say something a little bit about that, if I may. Um, I talk about it in the book in a little bit more detail, but I met him 
good God, uh, <laughs> sometime in the late 80s or early 90s. Um, I think it was at Shepperton Film Studios when I was visiting someone else and had a conversation with him um, about my uh, aspirations, cre creative aspirations, shall we say. Um, um, tragically, Mr. Williams was diagnosed with cancer in the year 2000. And remembering him and remembering our conversation, I wrote to him um, and I don't want to get into the contents of the letter, but, but you know, just a, a positive letter about what his conversation had meant to me. Uh, and he very graciously wrote back, um, I'm sure he had better things to do with his time. Um, and um, very wonderful letter. Uh, and and um, Michael Williams is uh, also known uh, for being the, the husband of um, Judy Dench, or the late husband of Judy Dench and uh, who's one of my favorite actresses. Um, and we were in rehearsal from Arshness when he passed away. We had just started rehearsals. So I decided there and then, because I, I always do a personal dedication um, for every script that I ever write to somebody who, who, who has meant something to me and still means something to me. Uh, and uh, that's my personal one. Um, so I hope people will permit me that indulgence. Um, so this is um, available on Amazon, Kindle, and will be paperback soon. The paperback is not proofed yet. Amazon has a bit of a higgledy-piggledy way of doing these things now. Um, so uh, I urge you not to buy the paperback for at least a week or two. But the Kindle version, um, which has been updated already, uh, is, um, is available now. Um, so that's the Marchness. Um, I, uh, as we are going to be doing film reviews on this channel um, in the not too distant future, I, I picked up two special editions on Blu-ray today. I don't, these are probably the first two Blu-rays I've bought in a really long time because uh, I just simply can't afford uh, to buy films anymore. Um, but I particularly wanted to get this very special and limited edition Blu-ray of um, the Waterloo film starring Rod Steiger. Um, quite an amazing achievement, uh, this movie. And um, it was a favourite of mine when I was younger. I do have a DVD of it. I don't have a Blu-ray. This special edition comes with all sorts of bells and whistles and books and things. So I really wanted to get that. I'm going to be talking about it another time. Um, and then uh, the film that I rented out a cinema for for my 30th birthday, because I'd never seen it on the big screen, um, uh, The Wild Geese, which I now also have a Blu-ray for. So, um, and may well rent out a cinema again, who knows, uh, to do that, uh, perhaps for my 60th. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, um, there we go. All right, so uh, do subscribe to the channel. There's loads more content going to be coming. Uh, we're not quite uh, at the heights of our good friend Critical Drinker yet, um, but we aim to produce a lot of our own content and um, things of that nature. So um, I do hope that you'll subscribe and share um, uh, our material. We have four online productions already. Uh, we push what you can do with Zoom to the limit, but our, our rule of thumb is it's got to work as a radio play. Um, but you will find that we have Persecution, which is a five-part drama about what happened to Colin Stagg. Uh, this was recently covered in a different drama on television. Um, you can watch them both and make up your own mind as to which you think is more accurate. Um, we did 13 Seconds in Kent State, which was probably... Um, one of my proudest uh, achievements. And again, this was a production we all did online. We have done Henry V, uh, which was directed by Toby Cockrell um, and was uh, fantastic fun to do. And uh, we have also done The Warm Up, um, which was again, myself and Dickon Tolson uh, directing, which is a comedy. We do do comedies. That one is very funny. There's two versions of it online, slightly, but it's the same script, but they're, they're slightly different takes. Um, do enjoy those. 
So we will be doing a live read through of the Marshalness Inquiry this Friday, seven o'clock GMT. Uh, so I think that's noon in LA. I think it's uh, two o'clock Chicago um, time uh, or uh, no, sorry, East Coast, two o'clock East Coast time. Um, and I think maybe one o'clock Chicago time. Um, so do tune in for that. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And um, I'm going to go and check this for spelling mistakes now, grammar mistakes, all that stuff. I'm sure there's going to be absolutely loads of them.